G'day, it's Craig here, and I'd like to welcome aboard Adam, who's our Chief Engineer at Kick-Ass Products, and he's gonna have a bit of chat to us about AGM batteries and lithium batteries. What are you gonna have for us, mate? Yeah, so today we're gonna talk about lithium batteries and our AGM batteries, and some of the differences between the two. Now, everyone's gonna have an opinion about what's better, but the important thing is that you work out what's best for you in your dual battery setup. So basically by the end of the video, people are gonna know um, what battery is gonna suit their personal setup compared to rumors and hearsay, basically. That's exactly right. And we're gonna look at uh, cost, we're gonna look at performance, we're gonna look at the battery management system and some other parameters that are important when you're considering your selection. All right, let's get stuck into it, you beauty. Okay, so one of the biggest questions I get asked, Adam, is about the cost, you know, the cost of an AGM versus the cost of a lithium battery. Like, um, can we talk about that for a little while? Yeah, sure. So the differences between the cost comes down to the raw materials used in the battery. So with an AGM battery, the materials is a lot more common and readily available, whereas your lithium battery is more rare and harder to source. Okay, mate, so the big question, can they be discharged to the same level? Now, if we've got an AGM battery that's 120 amp hours, and we've got a lithium battery that's 120 amp hours, we can't actually discharge them both to the same point. What's important is a term what we call depth of discharge, and depth of discharge is how much capacity you remove from that battery during the cycle. So for a 20% depth of discharge, you're removing 20% capacity and then replacing that 20% capacity with a charger, and that would be one cycle with a depth of discharge of 20%. So lead acid, it's a lot more sensitive to depth of discharge, and you really shouldn't discharge your battery any more than 50%. If we look at an AGM battery and a depth of discharge of 50%, you're gonna be able to cycle that battery down to 50% and then back up about a thousand times over the life of the battery. If you wanna discharge your AGM battery all the way down to 20%, which is a bad idea, then you're only gonna get about 500 cycles from that. And in some cases, you'll ruin the battery in, in the short term. Yeah, absolutely. With a lithium battery, if you're looking at a depth of discharge of say 20%, you can expect to get about 4,000 cycles out of that battery. Now, if you look at a depth of discharge of 80%, which you can't do with an AGM battery, you're gonna actually get 2,000 cycles out of that battery um, before you need to start looking at the replacement. So comparing cost of the battery, while your AGM on face value might seem cheaper, you get so much more out of your lithium batteries. So basically, mate, a single lithium battery is equal to four AGM batteries. Yeah, that's exactly right. Great value for money. So what's important when you purchase a battery is that you check that there's a data sheet available because this data sheet is going to give you really important information about your battery, the depth of discharge and the number of times you can cycle down to that point in the expected life cycle of the battery. So mate, with all that information, um, can you give us a bit of an idea on why I would choose lithium over AGM or vice versa? Yeah, sure. So if you're a weekend warrior and you're going out camping maybe four or five times a year just for the weekend, you're looking to power your fridge, looking to power some lights, and you know maybe charge your phone or a couple of other devices, then you could probably look at an AGM battery because it's gonna be good value for money and you're not gonna be looking at getting multiple cycles throughout the year on your battery. Now, the second scenario, you might be a heavier user when you're gonna be off grid or going away for a week or two at a time and you wanna have that backup that if there's no solar available or you can't charge your battery anywhere, that you're gonna have enough charge in that to get you through four or five days and that's where lithium is a great option. Okay, mate, so sometimes I get questions, is lithium safe? Like some people think it can be dangerous or volatile. Um, give us a bit of a rundown on how safe lithium is. Yeah, sure. So when we talk about lithium batteries, there's actually a few different types on the market with different chemistry. So we have a lithium ion battery, we have a lithium polymer, a battery which are two uh, quite common batteries out there yeah. and then we have lithium phosphate or LIFEPO4 and lithium phosphate are what our kick-ass batteries are and they're actually the safest chemistry of them all so that's due to their mechanical and chemical structure they're a lot less volatile if damaged and what really makes lithium batteries safe is the BMS or the battery management system so mate can you explain to all of us what the battery management system or the BMS actually does do that makes lithium 
lithium so safe? Yeah, sure. So the BMS monitors critical parameters inside the battery. So it monitors cell voltage, pack voltage, charge current, disc charge current. Now, when we think about these and voltage and current specifically, it can be helpful to think about water um, as an analogy. So if we think about a bucket of water with a hose attached at the bottom, you can think about voltage as the amount of pressure in that bucket from the water and you can think about current as how quickly that water flows in or out of the hose. So what the BMS does is it measures those parameters. So it'll measure the voltage or the pressure in the bucket and it will measure the current or how quickly the water is flowing in and out and make sure that that pressure or the voltage or that current, which is the water flow, never exceeds the specifications of that system. No, mate, that sounds pretty cool to me. Does the BMS do any other functions or is that just it? No, absolutely. So BMS will also look at your temperature. So inside the battery, there's our multiple temp sensors connected to the cells to ensure that those battery cells never exceed the allowable operational temperature to make sure they're always safe. Okay, and what about state of charge? Does it give you an example of state of charge as well? So state of charge isn't a term we normally associate with AGM batteries. With an AGM battery, we can just look at the voltage to determine how much charge is in the battery. With lithium batteries, we actually need to look at the voltage, the current and the temperature of the cells to work out how much charge is in the battery or what we call state of charge. So you can see on the AGM curve that it's relatively linear, a slight curve in it, but we can approximate that. So by looking at particular voltage, we can make an approximation on how much charge is left in the battery. Now for the lithium battery, you see it's a lot flatter, which is really hard just to look at the voltage to determine what the SOC is. And that's why it's important to use the current and the temperature to work that out. So that's great that the BMS can do all those calculations and give us all the information we need. I mean, you just don't get that with an AGM style battery, do you? Yeah, that's right. Um, not only an AGM style, but some lithium batteries won't also provide a screen or at least an application that you can connect to. Mm -hmm. So this is why the Kickass battery is great. We've got our RDU, which can show you your current, your voltage, temperature, time to full and time to empty. And it'll actually also show you lower level detail such as cell voltages. So does this remote display unit give you any other um, safety information about what's going on inside the lithium battery? Yeah, definitely. So if any alarms occur or any protection modes are entered, yep. then the RDU will actually display that and provide an audible alarm and flash up. Just like a short circuit. So as you can see here, Craig stripped the short circuit by putting a metal bar across it. And we can see here, we've got short circuit protection with an audible alarm occurring. Now with the short circuit protection, the BMS will turn itself off for a minute to make sure that condition has been removed before it connects back to the battery systems again. Geez, mate, that's pretty cool. I mean, talk about safety. You couldn't get away with that in an AGM battery, could you? Yeah, that's right. Mate, so that's fantastic about the BMS and the lithium batteries, but I, I reckon it's still not time to write off AGMs yet. Um, you know, they probably still are right for the right person as you're describing. So let's take a look at the AGM and what you can do to protect them. And Now, the most important thing in any dual battery system is to make sure you've got your battery fused. Now, your fuse needs to be sized accordingly for the cables that it's connected to, and also with consideration to the loads that you've got connected to the battery. So, so basically, that is built into the BMS of the lithium battery. So once again, we're talking about using one of these on an AGM battery? Yeah, that's exactly right. So it's effectively your current overcharge and discharge protection. Yep, perfect, that sounds great. Yeah. What, what else we got here, mate? So if we're talking about our lithium battery and the under voltage protection, we've got our low voltage disconnect or LVD in the form of our battery guard. Now, while the LVD in the battery guard is great, it's because we can actually set what that voltage level is that the battery guard or LVD in this case will disconnect once our AGM battery reaches that level. So if we want to make sure that we never discharge our AGM battery below a 20% depth of discharge, we can set the corresponding voltage in the battery guard by the Bluetooth application. And if we want to make sure our AGM battery never goes below 50% depth of discharge, we can set that corresponding voltage also in the battery guard. 
The other thing that the BMS does, which is great, is monitors the charge going in and out. Yep. Now, if we'd like to do that with an AGM style battery, we can use a smart shunt product. So this is the kick-ass battery monitor with 500 amp shunt. So it'll actually do a calculation of what the state of charge is given to you as a percentage, and it'll also monitor the current going in and out. So you can accurately determine how much load is being drawn from your battery. Well, that's awesome. So that's perfect for a weekend warrior that still wants to protect his battery and know everything that's going on, um, you know, including a temperature probe for an AGM battery. Absolutely. So, mate, I know all the technical specifications are fantastic on the lithium versus the AGM debate, but the thing I like the best is the weight. Yeah, definitely. There's a massive saving when you go with the lithium battery. So, we've got some scales here, Craig. We've got some batteries. Let's, let's weigh them up. And, and uh, you know, I consider that, you know, the weight versus um, the, the cost is also something to consider as well. You know, like some people, you know, when we check out the weight of that, what are we looking at? We're looking at about 29.5 kilos. Yeah, yeah, so quite heavy. Yeah, so when we chuck in the lithium, we're up around 14.5 kilos. So once again, you know, it is lightweight, but I, I would consider that in my costing as well. Like when I'm putting in my caravan and my four wheel drive, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes a little bit of a weight saving is a gain too. Yeah, absolutely. Should we have a look at the 200 yeah, let's, as well? Let's give that a go. And we've got that coming in at 19 and a half kilos. So That's again, 200 amp hours, we're still coming in lighter than our 120 AGM. That's unreal. Yeah. yeah. So weight's definitely something you should consider when selecting your battery system. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more portable, uh, then the lithium in the battery box might be a good option. If you want something that's more permanent, then you could look at AGM as long as you get in the capacity that you need out of the batteries. Sounds perfect, great. Hey, um, Adam, can you give us a bit of a description on charging AGM versus charging lithium batteries? Is there a difference between charging the two chemistry types? Yeah, definitely. So when selecting a battery, it's really important that we check it's got a data sheet to confirm what the allowable charge current is. Now, when you're looking at this data sheet, you're going to see some terminology, probably about 0.2C for an AGM as the charge current. What that refers to is, in terms of the C, is the capacity of the battery. So it's saying the allowable charge current is 0.2 of whatever the battery's capacity is. So if we look at our 120 amp AGM battery, to charge that at 0.2C, that's gonna be a maximum of 24 amps. And with the AGM batteries, it's important that we don't exceed that charge current. So basically stick to what the manufacturer says to charge the battery out and you can't go wrong. Sounds crazy, but that's exactly right. Now, for our lithium batteries, we can actually charge them at a higher capacity. So it's still recommended to maintain the battery and it's best for it to charge at 0.2C. So again, for 120 amp hour, that's 24 amps, but it is possible to charge them at higher rates. Now, again, please check the data sheet to confirm the maximum charge current of your lithium batteries. And I suppose, once again, there goes that magic of the BMS to determine if you're overcharging it, it will actually set off one of those alarms again. That's exactly right. If it detects that you're charging at a current rate higher than it's allowed, it'll switch off that pathway from the terminals to the battery that charge can go through. All right, well, that was bloody great. Well, thanks so much, Adam, for all your um, knowledge about lithium batteries and AGM batteries. It's great to know that, you know, AGM has still got their place and well as lithium. So, you know, it's horses for courses. One battery for one guy might not suit the others, but thanks for all the technical information. Um, if you really like this video and you'd like some more technical videos from Kick-Ass and having guys like Adam jump in, um, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe and let us know in the comments. And, um, thanks very much for watching the video. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Greg. I hope it really helps. Cheers.